Wow. This is a wonderful privilege to be back home. It's good to be here this morning. Dada, you're doing something good, Dada. You've got a few more people here than used to come and see me. What are you doing, Dada? You've got some magic water or something, eh? Good on you, Dada. It's good to have Dada, isn't it? I, a young man, keen to serve God, and I know he will serve you well. And uh, God will bless you abundantly as you cooperate and work together. I'm joyful that I'm here today, not just because it's worship, but we have a very, very special, special program today. It's a wonderful day. It's a high day, not only in the life of the family, of the church, but in the life of a pastor. Nikki doesn't know this but I'm going to use her words to start today's worship service. Because at the end of last year, as you were farewelling me, they gave me a little gift. And in that little bag was this card that I received. I'm not going to read it all, Ikkyo, but I'm going to read part of it because it's so beautiful. As pastors, we very rarely ever get cards like this. And this one really touched my heart. Dear Peter, thank you so much for your time and effort to give me the opportunity to meet Jesus. That just melted me. It really did. To be able to know that the little part that I had done had helped Ikkyo to meet Jesus. We really appreciate all the special lessons and very interesting stories you've given to us. Without your help, I'd have taken a lot longer for me to understand about Christianity. I am really happy that we, because it's not just Dickio today, it's Hugo and Milai, have come together in baptism, and so they said, I am really happy that we are standing at the start point of our journey. And church, Alstonville Church, it's not just me that's received this card, it's you guys as well. Because you're a part of that. You've been here also to embrace Dion and the Zarnoff family as they are making this wonderful journey with Jesus. And I believe they are blessed to be making that here at Alstonville Church. And so thank you, Ikkyo. They are beautiful words, and I want to now just turn your minds to Scripture. I want you to come to Exodus chapter 12. And Exodus chapter 12 will set the scene of what I believe is a beautiful scene, beautiful theme that that Scripture presents to us. Let us just bow our heads in prayer. Oh, gracious, loving Father, we come to you in abundant joy this morning because of the beautiful things that you have done for us. But we come today rejoicing because of wonderful things that you have done for Ikkyo, Hugo, and Milai, and that they've come together, dear Lord, today to be part of your family, to show you that they love you, for you have loved them. And we just pray that as we worship now, this will be a very high day in the life of this church and of this family, and we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Exodus chapter 12, verse 1. Because when you come to Exodus chapter 12, you have come to a very sad moment in the history of the world. You've come to the crisis point of the conflict of good and evil. You come to that moment in time where God wants to set his people free from sin. He wants to set the Israelites free from the evil of Egypt. But the Pharaoh has been rebellious. The Pharaoh has resisted every every opportunity that God has given him. The Pharaoh has rebelled. And it's come to that point where something very sad has to happen. 
God has to say to the children of Egypt and the children of Israel tonight, Pharaoh, if you don't let your children go, if you don't let the Israelites go tonight, the firstborn of every family will die. But then God says to all the people, but, I love it when God gives us a but. And God says, but, if you take a lamb of one year old, of unblemished, without spot, if you take that lamb and you kill that lamb, and then you take the blood of that lamb and you do something special with the blood of that lamb, you will not die. Your firstborn will not die. But then you're also to take the flesh of that animal, once cooked, and to eat that animal, to eat that meat, and then you are to come on a journey with me. Just think for a moment now. I've been a farmer. I have not killed a lamb. I chose not to kill a lamb, but I've seen many lambs being killed. Lambs are so innocent. They will let you take them. They will let you hold them. And so if you want to kill a lamb, and the worst thing you want to do to an animal before you kill it to eat it is to put it into stress because the meat will be tough. So with the lamb, you pick it up, you take it gently, you stand, and just as if you're going to share it, you have it crouch between your knees. It doesn't know what's going to happen, but the next minute it is dead because its throat has been cut. A terrible thing, a horrible thing, but that's what had to happen. Ikkyo, Hugo, Milai, you don't have to kill that lamb. You don't have to go through that problem. Dion doesn't have to do it on your behalf because it's already been done. It's been done by Jesus Christ, the lamb that died on the cross. And so Ikkyo, and Hugo and Mila, I want you to do something for me. I want you to leave where you are, but before you leave where you are, I want you to take your shoes off. And I want you to come up here bare feet because I want to teach you something very beautiful today. And so please come up and join me here because I've killed that lamb on your behalf. And just imagine that there is a doorpost here and I've done what scripture said in Exodus chapter 12. I've taken the blood of that lamb and I've painted the doorposts and I've painted the lintel of the door. And because that is done, you've been invited to go into your home. And so come with me, this is our home. And I want you to sit on the seat here for a moment as I now tell the rest of the story. Because in Exodus chapter 12, as you read through, we are told where they were to take this lamb. Verse 3 says, Speak to all the congregation of Israel, saying, On the tenth day of this month, every man shall take for himself a lamb, according to the house of his father, a lamb for the household. So your lamb has been slain. And that lamb is Jesus Christ, <coughs> the one that you thanked me for introducing to you. And so you, because of the blood, has been given. You've been able to enter into a safe place. But while you're in that safe place in the story, you have to do something. You have to do something. And as we read through the story, we're told that they were to use this blood on the doorposts, and that's what we've done. They were to eat some of the flesh during the night. They were to not eat it raw nor boiled at all with, wa with water but roasted in a fire, and so you've had, that, you've had that meal. But you were to do something while you did this. It says in verse 11, while you eat that meat, 
while you eat that lamb that has been sacrificed, while you've walked through the blood that has been put on the doorpost, you're to do something. You're to put on a belt. You're to put on your belt around your garment and then you're also to do something else. You're to put some sandals on your feet. These are your sandals. Put them on your feet. I hope they fit. If they're not, I've got a receipt that'll let you get better ones. And so you've done exactly what is told to you in Exodus chapter 12, verse 12. Uh, verse 11, it says, And thus you shall eat it with a belt on your waist, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand. Just imagine you've got one of them. So you shall eat it in haste, for it is the Lord's Passover. Because at this moment, something is going to happen. Either the firstborn in your house is going to die, which in this case would be Hugo. Now, I know you don't want him to die. So you've followed the counsel of God and you've put the blood on the doorposts. You've come inside, you've eaten the lamb, you've put sandals on your feet because God wants to, to save Hugo in this case. And through this, he demonstrates how he wants to save us all. And so what he does then is because he has said that judgment is coming to the land, the avenging angel comes this night. And to every house where there is no blood, the firstborn dies. Even the firstborn of Pharaoh died that night. But nobody in a house where the blood of that lamb was, nobody in the house where the blood of Jesus is, will die. God will keep them safe. And then he takes them on a journey. He takes them on a journey. And he brings them to a place. He brings them to a place. And where does he bring them? He brings them to the wilderness. For three days they have journeyed in the wilderness. They have been fleeing from the Egyptian army who is cranky, hostile, angry, and wants vengeance on God. So the whole Egyptian army is following this camp of the Israelites. And they end up in a more dangerous place than where they were before. They end up with a mountain range. They end up with a river. And they end up with an army behind them and nowhere to go. Nowhere to go. Moses is their leader, but they're not sure if he's capable of delivering them out of this situation. And now more than ever, they are fearing death. They are fearing death. But God's got a plan. God always has a plan. It's a perfect plan. It will never fail. And when we come to Exodus chapter 14, and we start getting down towards verse 16, we won't share the whole story, but in verse 16, God has told Moses, go stand on a rock. Go, Moses, go, go stand on that rock and hold out your rod. Hold out your rod. And he does. Verse 16. But lift up your rod and stretch your hand out over the sea and divide it. So he does. Moses does exactly what God wants him to do and the waters of the sea part. And the children of Israel shall go on on dry ground through the midst of the sea. Now who goes there? Only the people who put their sandals on. Only the people who put the belt on. Only the people who had the blood of the lamb keeping them safe walked in that sea. God took the children of Israel, the obedient ones, who put their sandals on their feet. He took them through the sea. Beautiful, isn't it? Let's go down to verse 21. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord caused the sea to go back. A strong east wind all that night and made the sea into dry land and the waters were divided. So the children have went in the midst of the sea on the dry ground in the waters were, 
the waters were a wall to them on their right hand and to the left. And the Egyptians pursued them. And the Egyptians pursued them. But something happened. Something terrible happened. If you come to verse 26. It says, Then the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand. Moses was told twice to stretch out his hand. One time it offered salvation to the people who wore sandals. Because sandals are very significant when you come to Scripture. And so Moses stretched out his hand and the waters, that the waters may come back. Friends, you find your salvation in Jesus Christ when you do two things. When you walk through the doorway that has the blood of Christ upon it and when you put sandals on your feet and follow the pathway that God leads you on, you have salvation. All of the household of Israel had salvation that night. They were able to walk through that dry sea. They were able to be delivered, but not the Egyptians. Because they, they weren't covered by the blood and they didn't have the right sandals on their feet. So what is it about sandals? What is it that, that makes all of this so special? Let's go to Isaiah 52. Isaiah chapter 52. Something here is said very beautifully about sandals. Isaiah 52 and it's verse 7. How beautiful upon the mountains. Now mountains are beautiful things. We take pictures of them. Even if they're covered in snow, we take pictures. We love the scenery of mountains. But look at this mountain. Look at how beautiful this mountain becomes. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of those. Are the feet of those. How beautiful upon the mountain are the feet of those who bring good news who proclaims peace, who brings glad tidings of good things, who proclaims salvation, who says to Zion, a mountain is made all the more beautiful when, a, when the right person is standing upon it. Who's that right person? Let's go. Let's go and have a look at Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6. We, didn't, we never make sense of Scripture until we look at all of what Scripture has to say about any one thing. And here in Ephesians chapter 6, in Ephesians chapter four, uh, yeah, 6, when it's talking to us about how to be pre protected in the world, how to stay safe in the world. Ephesians comes along and Paul says to us that the way to, to, to find way is to put on the armour of God. And he gives us all of this counsel to put on the armour of God. And when we come to verse 10 of Ephesians 6, he says, finally, brethren. You get it? Finally. This is the one thing you need to know more than anything else. Finally, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. That's why the Israelites were delivered, because God was the strong one. They only had sandals on their feet, but the power came from God. God's the strong one. No, we're too weak, we're too fragile, we're too vulnerable. Put on the whole armour of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of the darkness of age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. Therefore, 
Take up the whole armour of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand, stand therefore having girt your waist with truth. Remember, the Israelites had to put a belt around their waist. If we wanted to get the victory today, friends, we got to be dressed just like the Egyptians, the Israelites were dressed. With God's armour on. And here we're told that we must have a belt around the waist. Having put on the breastplate of righteousness. Now look at the next verse. God's interested in your feet. He doesn't care how smelly they are. He doesn't care what your toes look like. He's not worried about that. He just wants to protect you. He just wants to love you no matter what you are. And for most people, we're lucky that our toes are down there and not up here because they're not all that attractive, are they? As far as God's concerned, the beautiful bits are down there. And he says to us, therefore, and he says, and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Yeah. That's it. You've walked through the blood. You've accepted the salvation of Jesus Christ. You've put your shoes on your feet and he now wants to take you on this beautiful journey. You said in your card to me, you were beginning and you are. That's the beginning of your journey. You have put, your, the, you have put the shoes on your feet which represent, as far as the word of God is concerned, which represents the preparation of the gospel of peace. This is your beginning. This is the preparation of something amazing. This is the preparation. This is the beginning of something absolutely beautiful. Because I don't know what God's got planned for you. I'm not as clever as him, but he does. And the most exciting thing about it, Dion, is you've now got a wife beside you that's got sandals. You got yours last year. You've got a wife beside you now that's on the same journey as you. You've got a son beside you that's on the same journey as you because he's got a sandal. Mila, you're on the same journey. You're all walking that journey together. You ring me up one day when Isla's ready to have her sandals and I'll come and give them to her too. Okay, I make that promise to you. Okay? I'm 69, I'll get, I'll get there. Okay? Oh, look... Now, what, what about the water? What, 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 what about that? Let's have a look now. Let's come to 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Because today we're having a baptism. Now, why is Ikkyo? Why is Hugo? Why is Meli? Why should anyone be baptised? It's because of what we read now. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. In 1 Corinthians chapter 10... Paul is doing a rewind. Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 10 is going back to the very place I started today, Exodus chapter 12. In 1 Corinthians chapter 10, Paul is wanting to teach something very valuable and the only way he could do it was go back to the Exodus journey. We can get a lot of stuff out of the Exodus journey if I was still your pastor, I could preach here for the next 10 years and not teach everything about the Exodus journey. That's how loaded it is. But we're just going to pull one more thought out of it today, and it's found here in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 1 and 2. Moreover, brethren, I do not want you to be unaware that all our fathers were under the cloud, all passed through the sea, and then what does it say next? All were baptised into Moses. Now why does it say Moses and not Jesus? Why does it not say baptised into God? A very significant point here. Because Moses had been called by God to be his faithful leader. Up till this point, the people were not aware, not, not fully convinced that Moses was the right guy. 
Remember he had committed murder? He had done bad things along the way? There was still dissension in the ranks as to whether Moses was the capable leader, but God made him do something. God made him stand on a rock, look like an idiot, and flash a rod. But God accepted his faith and parted the waters. At that moment, the people gained their trust in Moses as their leader. That was their salvation back then. They had to accept Moses as their leader. Today, we don't do that. In baptism, we acknowledge Jesus Christ as our leader. Because back then, Moses was a type of Jesus. We don't need a type of Jesus because the real Jesus has come. So as those children of Israel walked into the Red Sea, there was not just the parted river. There was not just water there, and there was not just water there. The cloud was up there. And clouds are full of water. The children of Israel that day, every one of them was immersed in water. It was all around them. It was beside them. It was above them. They were immersed in water. And this is why the New Testament encourages us to be baptised. Because every Israelite was baptised. The blood sacrifice had been accepted. They'd put their sandals on their feet to go with the gospel. They follow the gospel and the gospel gives them deliverance. And that's why we're baptised. That's a significant act of baptism because it is a demonstration by us as to who our leader is, as to who we are loyal with. So, Ikio, Hugo, Milai, I just want to encourage you to go on this beautiful journey. Because after the children of Israel put their sandals on, they saw the Red Sea part, they saw food fall out of heaven for 40 years, they saw miracle after miracle, they saw the glory of God at Mount Sinai, they saw miraculous things. And those who kept their sandals on faithful to God entered the promised land. God's got great plans for you guys. Please come up here and join me. It's been a wonderful time of journey for me. Ikio, unlike almost everybody else here, had no appreciation or understanding of Christianity. She grew up in a culture where Christianity was extremely foreign. And this dear lady asked me the hardest question I've ever been asked at a Bible study. I thought I was making progress. I was, tell, I was sharing the good stuff. And I thought I was making progress. And then one night when we sat there and studied, I was saying stuff, but I knew she had a question. And I, I, I said to her, Ikio, there's something that troubles you. What is it? And she was a little bit reluctant because she thought it was a dumb question. And she said to me, Peter, I can love Dion because he's here. I can touch him. I can see him. And I can love a person I can see. But you're telling me to love a God that I can't see? I don't know. Wow. That's, that rattled my cage. It's never been asked of me before and on the spot. I put a, I put a Bible study together which we went through for the next hour of how Jesus is the picture of God. And at that moment, I could sense Ikio falling in love with God because she saw God in Jesus. And it was a beautiful moment and we had a wonderful journey from then on. Don't be afraid to ask the questions even if you think they're dumb ones. Because if you've got a question in your mind, it's an important question, ask it. And maybe the answer that you get to that question that will take you on the journey like they've been on. Because we have studied, because we've spent time in the Word of God, I have these three questions to ask of you. 
and we'll ask them as, as one of the three of you. So, uh, Ikio, Hugo and Milai, do you accept Jesus Christ as your personal Saviour and Lord? And do you desire to be baptised into a saving relationship with him? I do look at that wonderful... Ikkyo, Hugo, Milai, do you accept the teachings of the Bible as expressed in the statement of fundamental beliefs in the Seventh-day Adventist Church? And do you pledge by God's grace to live your life in harmony with these teachings? I do. Look at that. Hugo, Ikkyo, Milai, do you desire to be baptised as a public expression of your belief in Jesus Christ, to be accepted into the fellowship of this, the Alstonville Seventh-day Adventist Church, to support the church and its mission as a faithful steward by your personal influence, ties, offering, and a life of service. Yeah, and look, they've even signed them, folks. They've signed their life away to Jesus Christ. To Jesus Christ. Now, what I'd like to do, I'd like uh, Dada to come up, and I'd like all the elders to come up, and uh, let's even have the family, the family that have come to see this. Let's, let's have the family come up here because our church clerk is going to come up and uh, present them with a gift. But um, when, you, when they all get here, come on, family. Yep, that's it. Come on. Come on, grandparents. Hey. Anyone else that's come to be here with you, come up. Even if you're just a friend, you're allowed to come. Okay. I bend the rules. I don't mind. Okay. This is lovely. This is wonderful. I want to acknowledge that there have been a lot of people that have played their part um, in today. This is not just about me. This is about the Holy Spirit. This is about God working through people. And... Um, Ikio had no idea when she married Dan Dion, she wasn't just marrying him because he looked good. Okay? <laughs> it's because God wanted her to, so that they would come to this moment. Okay? Always remember that, Dion. <laughs> but yes. So now that I'm not the pastor of your church, I can't officially ask you to make a motion. So at this point we'll hand over to Dada. And Dada, would you like to ask the church if there's a motion to accept these dear folks into this church subject to baptism this afternoon? Good morning, everyone. Happy Sabbath. It's a privilege to come to church and third Sabbath we have already three baptisms, you know. That's wonderful. And uh, we have as a board met on Monday and we would like to recommend to the church that we accept these three new members as a member of Alstonville Church. And I'd like to see if I have any seconders here. I've got plenty. So is everyone in favor that will welcome this beautiful family into the membership of Alstonville Church, knowing that they will get baptized today? Put your hand up, please. You see, everyone wants that. So please, don't run away from the baptism in the afternoon. <laughs> now, as, Thank you, Peter. Now, as the pastor of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, now Ballin are not here, I want to also welcome you into the big church, the worldwide church. You're not just a member here. You're a member of the, every Adventist church in Japan. You're, you're, you belong to the Seventh-day Adventist church. So congratulations on joining the family of God today because that's what you've done. This is about joining the family of God and congratulations. So we will ask our church clerk to come forward and uh, we have gifts for you. Okay. This church loves to give things, so if you want to get a gift, do something like this, and you'll get a gift. Now we have here Hugo, and we have here Eli, and there you are. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Oh, gracious, loving Father, what a joy, what a privilege, what a delight to be here today, to have this family up here looking at their family, the church family. And in all things, Father, we give glory and we honour you for the beautiful God that you are. We thank you, dear Lord, that you gave the sacrifice, you gave Jesus Christ. You gave the blood through which Ikio and uh, Hugo and Meli could walk 
to find their salvation. And then, dear Lord, today we have given them sandals to put on their feet because they want to walk this journey with you. They want to be part of your journey. They want to be able to walk through Red Sea experiences. <clears throat> they want to be able to enter into that promised land. And I know that you can do it because you love them. And so I just pray a very special blessing over Ikeo, Hugo and Milai today at this baptism. Oh, thank you for Dion. Thank you that he's the father of the household. Thank you for his mum and dad. Thank you for the family that support him. But may we as a church too play our part in helping to guide them all the way to the kingdom. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Yes, I and written the three of them a special letter. I asked him if he wanted to share it from up here, but he says no. He wants them to enjoy the moment privately. So know, know that there's something special coming from Dion. That's it for me. Do we have a song? Thank you. Thank you for our worship today. It's been beautiful. get into the spirit of singing redeemed the first hymn I ever had heard sung redeemed I was only 12 years old and it touched my heart then Mesa was 12 when I first heard that sung sadly she's not here today to see this beautiful day let us pray loving heavenly father we just pause in the goodness of who you are. We thank you for your redemption. We thank you that your plan continues to go on. We thank you just by putting sandals on and accepting and going on the journey of the preparation of the gospel of peace. That we can have all of you. We can be blessed by you. We can, we can have everything and that word redeemed means we have everything right now. Thank you, God. Thank you that we need no more than you. Oh, dear Lord, bless this, this beautiful family. Bless Dion, Ekio, Hugo, Mila, Ayla. Bless them, dear Lord, for they are a family united in you. Just watch over them and love them. As I ask you to do to every family that is here in the house of the Lord. Oh, Holy Spirit, if you're busy now convicting others to make this journey and to travel through the waters of baptism, please have them speak to Dada because I know Dada will lead them to the right place too. Bless everyone now as we leave this place and in a little while we'll be there at Pop Denison Park to finalise this, this, this significant event. Bless us in every way, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs>